one of your marker pop colorists. I have a mini tutorial for you today. Today we're going to color a blue bird. There are many different ways to do this, but I'll show you mine. We're going to be using B21, B23, B26, and B27. And I will also be showing you how I use a C5 to darken my shadows, um, to add more intensity. Uh, Suzanne Dean used to refer to this as a sandwich. So I'll be doing that technique today. So I'm going to show how I color with that, how I darken my shadows, and how I use some uh, um, Copic opaque ink. Um, to highlight the feathers and we're going to be using this adorable image from um, Whiff of Joy called Spirit of Nature. I stamped my image with ex on Express It blending card paper. Nice smooth texture with this paper and I used Memento Tuxedo Black. Now on my little bird, I'm going to be having my highlights come from um, the upper left-hand corner, highlighting. That'll be my lighter side, but of course beneath, um, on the underside of the bird and under the wings, we'll have a little more intensity, some shadow. I'm going to begin by just laying down some color to allow for easier blending and I'm using my lightest color my B21 and this does not need to be smooth I'm just going to be doing some flicking methods in the direction that the feathers would um, be the, uh, the direction the feathers would be lying just a quick flicking method um, again, don't have to be real smooth on this. I'm going to take my next darker color, my B23. You'll notice these um, the blue colors are a natural blending family that we discussed the last two weeks. Um, the B remaining consistent and the um, first number being the two remains consistent during this portion. Now I'm just mapping where I'm going to be having some of my shadows uh, on the underside of the belly under that wing to allow the wing to pop more and remembering that the head is a cylinder. It's a round, um, just like the body would be another, um, like an oval. So you will want some darker shadow on the very edges of those oval shapes to allow your image to have dimension. So we're just putting in a little darker shade now using my B26 and blending out, flicking from the outer edge with my B23, my midtone, my lighter midtone. Just making little dash marks because my feathers in this area are very small and it's much like doing hair you would like to retain the little um, st strands. You would like um, strands with hair and we'll have little feathers on this image. So you don't want to blend too much. Just little flicking motions. We're going to um, apply from the outer edges of those with our next lightest highlight color. Flicking from the outer edge and down just so slightly. 
because you are going to want some dimensional blending, just not over blending. Now I'm going to do some higher intensity. This is optional. Just under the feather area, the tail, under the little chin or the beak, and the very bottom portion. Just because I like intensity. I always like a lot of contrast between my highlight and my um, shadow, but that's totally optional for you. I'm applying my darker mid-tone, flicking away from those areas inward just so that um, although I want to retain a little bit of the feathery look, I do want it to appear as if the bird has dimension and the body is rounded. And the next lighter tone and just again flicking inward toward my highlight. Short flicking motions, giving some roundness, shape to the head. Now I'm going to take a C5. I'm going to just use it very sparingly where I want my very darkest intensity. You know, we've laid down a very dark color, then C5, then we're going to go over the top with the dark color again. That's where Suzanne Dean uses the word uh, sandwich. There are many ways to color a bird, but this is just how I learned, and you, um, you can um, try it if you'd like. It's, it's just how I, I color it. Now for my third thing I wanted to share with you today, it's how I get a little bit more of a, a feathery look to the bird. I take a little um, liner brush and I wet the end and apply it, um, put it in a little bit of my opaque white and just tiny little flicking motions. Um, you won't want to overdo this step. Um, but just tiny little flicking motions and it'll look like the sun is just catching the, the um, lightest of your feathers. I'm applying a little bit of T3 to the little feet and to the beak. And then I'm taking a little C5 and darkening the area that I think might be in shadow with that. I love birds. I have three of my own in addition to tons of bird feeders outside, so I love birds. I'm just going to um, use some of my um, taupe colors for the little wood that this bird is standing on just to give you an idea of how it looks um, a little bit more finished. I'm just applying color with my E40. I'm going to try to keep my consistency with my highlights or um, light source to be the same as I did with the bird except the bark of the tree will not reflect as much um, so it won't be as noticeable. So I'm using the E40, E43, E44, and E47 sparingly. I'm using the E47 a little bit heavier on the right side of the bird because I do want to try to retain some lightness on the other side uh, where my light source is even though it will not be super reflective. And I like to always just flick down a little further than the lines on my given image just to give it a little bit more of a natural look. I don't stop right where my line ends. I continue to flick downward. I love to do wood. Sometimes you can always add a little bit of your, like your E15 or 18 in there if you want a little more reddish 
color tones, but I'm going to leave this rather drab. Now I'm going to take some, um, just a light little watercolor wash afterwards and um, do the outside background, but we'll not review that at this time. I'm going to take a little multi-liner, black, 0 0.03, my favorite, and I'm just accentuating um, the line between the upper and lower beak and the eye, just a tiny bit. I'm going to put a little dot in the center of the eye of my uh, white to add a little bit of a gleam to the eye. And there you have it. Hope you give it a try. Experiment with your own technique. And I hope you enjoy this. If you see it on YouTube, I hope you like, that you share, and you subscribe. I'll see you next week with another mini tutorial. Thank you for watching.